Do they know that you're here doing this? Who is they? The powers that be. The powers that be. What did you mean by unfortunately you cannot touch me? What does that mean? Is it fortunate if you can put your hands on people? The long escalator ride of shame. Who are you, ma'am? I, I work downstairs at the front desk. And your name? Cheryl. Cheryl? That's Wanda giving a false name to First Amendment auditor Sean Paul Reyes. If we were to walk up these stairs and to knock on the mayor's door and try and ask him some questions, you intend to have us arrested? Now it is very clear why the city did not want a journalist with a camera walking around the government center. They didn't want their corruption to be exposed. Hey, what's up guys? Long Island Audit here back again with another video. In today's video, we are going to be covering some serious allegations of government corruption and election fraud involving the woman in front of you, Wanda Geeter, also known as Cheryl. We met Wanda during our audit of the government center in Bridgeport. If you'd like to watch my full interaction with Cheryl, excuse me, Wanda, and the other public servants at the Bridgeport Government Center, I will leave a link to my original audit in the description right below the like button. Now, let's take a look at the accusations that are now facing Wanda. Lady caught on camera allegedly stuffing white envelopes into this absentee ballot drop box works just feet away here at the front desk of the Margaret Morton Government Center. This is the post of Wanda Geeter Pataki, except she's not here. Put on leave pending the investigation into absentee ballot fraud. Still collecting your taxpayer funded paycheck. Where's Wanda? Fox 61 made a house call. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to point out that when Matt Karen of Fox News couldn't get the answers he was looking for at the government center, he went to a government official's home to ask the tough questions. But according to Nassau County District Attorney Ann Donnelly, when I went to a police commissioner's home, police commissioner Patrick Psycho Ryder, to ask him about his asset forfeiture slush fund and his previous heinous arrest record, that was egregious. But do you see the double standard when it comes to mainstream press? And it's acceptable when a mainstream reporter goes to a government official's home, and that's good reporting. But when I go to a government official's home to ask tough questions because they're hiding from these questions, that becomes off as antagonistic. The double standard is egregious, and this is just what the government officials are trying to do. They're trying to divide us. They're trying to paint me in a certain light. But this is normal practices by journalists. And I applaud Matt Karen's vigorous investigating. Hello? Yes, we're looking for Wanda. Wanda's not here. All right, yeah, we just, uh, Matt Karen with Fox 61 News, we had a couple questions to ask her about the video that appears to show her stuffing the ballot box. <laughs> um, no, nah, I have nothing to say about that. Fox 61 learned Wanda Geeter Pataki is an operations specialist. She made about $60,000 in 2020, a public supporter of Mayor Joe Gannum. She also manages Pataki bail bonds and is a justice of the peace. She was ultimately referred by SEC over to uh, the state's attorney's office. And yes, she's the same woman named in a 2019 State Elections Enforcement Commission ballot fraud investigation, which has been referred to the chief state's attorney's office for possible criminal charges. Without getting to names, uh, there's a city employee who works at the front desk, clearly, uh, who, who uh, so no, to support no connection, you. no. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's been, that's right. And speaking of not getting into names. You have to come back downstairs, young man. Hi, who are you, ma'am? I, I work downstairs at the front desk. And your name? Cheryl. Cheryl? That's Wanda, giving a false name to First Amendment auditor Sean Paul Reyes during his recent visit to the city offices. Excuse me, ma'am. You told me your name was Cheryl, but I seem to hear everybody calling you Wanda. Did you lie to me about your name, ma'am? Ma did you lie to me? Did you lie to me about your name, ma'am? No, I don't lie to you about nothing. Everybody's calling you Wanda, but you... my name. My name is Wanda. Yes, it is. Wanda also happens to be the vice chair of the Bridgeport Democratic Town Committee. This same person uh, was a celebrated political oper operative of the Connecticut Democratic Party. In 2019, she actually received a, a state party award at the El Grasso dinner, 
So this is somebody that the, the state Democratic Party knows. State Democratic Party Chair Nancy DiNardo. What do you know about her? Well, actually, I really don't know that much about her. Um, I'm not sure that I really know her. I know the family. I know she's the vice chair, and I know I have met her. But um, other than that, to say I know anything about her, um, I don't. All this while Mayor Joe Gannum continues to question both the authenticity and custody of the surveillance video itself. And while a judge gets set to rule on Monday whether Bridgeport's primary results should be thrown out and a new primary be held. Reporting in Bridgeport, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. As you can see, Matt Karen of Fox News did an excellent job in his reporting on the story, but he went even further. He challenged law enforcement in the government center over their unconstitutional and unlawful policies. It's one of the first rules of journalism, never become part of the story. But today, we nearly had to in order to stand up for all of our rights to access a public building and a public official. As the Bridgeport Police Department tried to restrict access to Mayor Joe Ganim's office as we were trying to ask him questions. Joe's gotta go! Joe's gotta go! There's a clear call for accountability in Bridgeport. Y'all bring the election code, A call that's getting louder. Joe's gotta a protest Friday outside the Margaret Morton Government Center. Come speak to the people, Joe. Fix the city, not the election. Drawing the attention of residents. We need a new mayor. We need change in the city of Bridgeport. Business owners. Enough is enough. We got to get him out. He should resign today. Former city employees. We were all hardworking city employees with ethics and morals. And even primary candidates like Leslie Caraballo, who after seeing the surveillance video of alleged ballot stuffing, decided to remove her name from the ballot as a candidate for Board of Ed. I don't want to walk into a seat the wrong way. When is enough is enough? When are we going to put our minds together and say, all right, well, let's have FBI step in because right now the way I'm feeling, everyone is raped. As the protest grew, Joe gotta go. security watched from the roof line and Bridgeport police gathered inside. Joe, come out, show your face, represent. Blocking access to Mayor Joe Ganim's office on the second floor. What law says we can't go knock on the mayor's door? If you go right over to the security guard right there and ask him to make an appointment and see if you're can authorized you to go upstairs, to then we can see what we can do for you. Police began referencing unconstitutional signs, not backed by statute or law. You could have a it's sign a in here the building, sir, that in the says, I above. can't wear blue I, jeans on Tuesday. You can't and if I wore blue upstairs. jeans on Tuesday, you can't go are you going to enforce that? You are you going to kick you me You can't out? go upstairs, sir. In our quest to conduct journalistic due diligence, police made their intentions clear. If you go upstairs and security wants you removed, then the Bridgeport Police Department will then step in and we have to do what we have to do. But removed under what law and statute? We'll be trespassing. Keep in mind, the Margaret Morton Government Center is a public building funded by the taxpayers, along with the mayor's salary and all police officers who swear an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. You intend, if we were to walk up these stairs and to knock on the mayor's door and try and ask him some questions, you intend to have us arrested no. for trespassing? No. So, we, so then what, is, what are you saying? That. You have to take all this up with the security guard that runs the building right now. But they're not going to arrest me. Security doesn't arrest people. You arrest people. They're not qualified again, to determine again, that. They're the ones that make the call. Ultimately, these interactions with police involved me. But as a member of the press, my rights are no different than any one of you. We all have the right to access the mayor's office. But rather than risk an unlawful arrest, we decided to show you, the people, these interactions so you can decide who needs to be held accountable. Ladies and gentlemen, this story is extremely important because it highlights the fact that we the people need transparency and accountability within our government now more than ever. The surveillance footage we all just witnessed was completely shocking and to me clearly shows Cheryl, excuse me, Wanda, stuffing the ballot box in favor of her boss, Mayor Joe Ganim. Mayor Joe Ganim by the way, was convicted of corruption charges and sentenced to nine years in federal prison, which absolutely blows my mind. The fact that the Bridgeport, Connecticut residents would reelect a man convicted on felony corruption charges is insane.
Make it make sense. Now, that being said, I wanted to highlight Fox News reporter Matt Karen. He did an excellent job in his reporting. He asked the tough questions. And not only that, he stood up for our rights. He went to the government center and challenged law enforcement on their unconstitutional signage and policies. We need more reporters like Matt Karen. The whole point of having freedom of the press is to hold government accountable and to promote transparency. That is why we do what we do. And I want to thank Matt Karen for standing up for we the people, standing up for all of our rights. He is very much appreciated here on this channel. The update to the story is that a Connecticut state judge has ordered a redo on the primary election. Stay tuned to the channel for further updates. As always, stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Long Island Audit. Peace.